Hey Dev Nation's book devs, I hope you're having a great day. I wanted to go ahead and take some time to go ahead and debunk some common reading myths. Reading throughout the last several years, I've come across a lot of different reading myths. And so I wanted to go ahead and debunk a few of those common myths. One of the more popular myths I've seen is physical books are way better than ebooks. Now, I personally don't believe this is true. I think you have to go ahead and take a look at the value that each item is going to provide you. If you're one who likes to travel a lot or knows you're going to be moving a lot, then ebooks might be the right pick for you. Or if you know you have a home, you're open to having your own room, your own library, and developing your own space over the next decade or so, then maybe, you know, books might be the right thing for you. Or maybe you just prefer the, the physical copy of actually having a book in your hand then yeah, maybe physical books are for you. Maybe you're more of an on-the-go kind of reader. You like to read during your commute in transit or you're a student, so you know, you're living in the dorms and then you plan to move back home afterwards. Whatever your life situation is, you have to go ahead and look at which version of these books is gonna serve you more, physical copy books or eBooks. So it's not that one book is better than the other, just everybody has their own preference. Next myth is reading is expensive. Now, I know right off the bat, when you look at prices on Amazon or you look at different prices wherever you buy your books, yeah, it can be a bit pricey. But what I found is you can find books at a great bargain, at a really great deal if you just know where to look. So firstly, if you want to just go for free, you can always check online and see places like Craigslist or any other merchants online and see if there's anybody just giving away free books. Now, I would say the, the best and also safest way to get free books would be check out your local library. If you have a local library nearby, they're going to have books there and you can go ahead and check them out. There's no shame in using books from the library. I do it all the time. Now, if you want to go ahead and start collecting and buying books because, you know, they're going to be books that you want to sort of read and study perhaps the rest of your life or you just want to go ahead and expand your collection. I would say go ahead and look up used bookshops. Usually you can get them for about one USD or any other sort of pre-owned books, whether it's online or or you know wherever you live you can usually find savings of up to about 80 90 percent savings you know from like twenty dollars to a dollar type of thing our next myth is i don't have time to read yes i know everybody has a busy schedule there's so many things that we have to go ahead and handle nowadays you know if you have a family if you have kids if you have school if you have work if you have volunteering all these different things you got to handle the last thing you want to do is go ahead and read now it's definitely a challenge but here are a few tips Firstly, if you find yourself on your phone quite a bit using social media, those are usually down times that you have throughout your day anyways. And maybe you can just go ahead and swap out your phone with a book or with an e-reader and just go ahead and knock out 10 minutes of reading a day. Now, if you say, Ryan, I'm so busy, I don't even go on my phone at all. I don't follow social media, I don't go on it. How do you recommend I go ahead and read books because I just don't have time? Well, I would certainly say try and take advantage of any sort of downtime you might have. And I really mean any sort of downtime. This includes your commute time. This can include when you go to use the bathroom. This can include when you're making your lunch or your dinner or breakfast. Any sort of time you have where you're doing something perhaps a little bit passive, you can go ahead and listen to audiobooks if you need to. And while you're taking care of your day-to-day -day tasks, you can go ahead and also knock out some reading as well. Even if it's five, 10 minutes, that's still consistent reading that you can consistently do throughout your daily habits. Now, this next myth is sort of a, a two-parter. Firstly, you have to go ahead and finish books you start or you have to read all the books you buy. And this is simply just not true. It really just depends on your perspective. If you go ahead and buy a whole pile of books and you maybe only read one or two or maybe none of them, well, don't see it as a burden, as this bad thing that you wasted your money on. You could also see it as you bought all these books that are inspiring you to go ahead and be curious and to continue exploring and going down this adventure of books and on life, whatever your, your life path takes you. See books as a way to inspire you instead of seeing it as some weight that you have to go ahead and tackle because you haven't read all these books. I totally understand. I used to sort of feel like that. Like once I had a lot of books, I'd be like, oh man, what am I going to do? I have to go ahead and, and read all these books or else like I'm failing in my in my book journey it's like no go ahead and, and be willing to prioritize the books that are most important to you and and the things throughout your life that are most important to you and just see books that you haven't read as sort of like an inspiration oh you know there's that book that i haven't read maybe tomorrow will be the day i read or maybe later today or maybe right now 
see it as books of inspiration because you can also see books as works of art. And authors go ahead and dedicate several different months, years even, to go ahead and dedicate to a book and write everything they're thinking down onto paper for us to then go ahead and consume and enjoy and really be able to take away from. And so you could see books as a sort of art form. Utilize it to go ahead and inspire you and motivate you to continue moving forward. Now secondly, when you've started reading your book, if it's just not connecting with you, maybe you don't like the topic or maybe it's going off topic from what you originally thought it was gonna be, just give it your best effort. Really try to sit down, be one with the book and allow yourself to get into that flow, into that focus and try and connect with the book. But if you're really trying, it's been 10, 15 minutes, you know, and maybe you try it a second time and you're just not connecting with it, there's no shame in just closing up the book and putting it away and saving it for 10 years down the road because the person you are now is not going to be the same person you are 10 years from now just like the person you are now is not the same person you were five years ago right it's the same idea and so interests that you have now are going to change over time of course just like food there's food I'm sure you like now that you used to hate maybe five, 10 years ago. And it's the same idea with books. So your interests and tastes in books are gonna change over time as well. And there's no shame in putting a pause on it and maybe coming back to it later or maybe never at all. But at least you can say you tried to really understand and read and dissect the book and it just, it wasn't for you. Our next myth is one of my favorites and it's that audiobooks are not actually reading. And I completely disagree with this myth. And I absolutely disagree with this myth. To me, even before we get into the technicality of is it actually reading or not, you have to see it as if you are obtaining information in audiobooks through listening, right, through your ears, is the way you can you prefer to consume information, then just use that to consume your information. There's no reason that you have to force yourself to sit down and actually go through and read the book with your eyes and, and like, actually read the information if it makes more sense for you to be more efficient or that you just personally enjoy it more to just listen to an audiobook then you do that but on the technicality perspective i went ahead and looked up the definition in merriam-webster's dictionary read and reading is to receive or take in the sense of letters symbols etc especially by sight or touch even technically speaking, audiobooks could still be a form of reading because even though you're not seeing it, right, or you're not touching it, it is still a sense of consuming that information through audio. So I would still classify both technical sense or non-technical sense, audiobooks is still considered reading. And again, it's just like with the gym, right? If you don't like running, go swimming. If you don't like swimming, go lift weights. Find what works for you. And it's the same idea with books, whether you like audiobooks, ebooks, physical copy books, whatever works for you, find what works for you and then utilize that. Don't worry about whatever people are saying in terms of, oh, one's better than the other. Just find what works for you and you stick with that and run with it. Lastly, reading is boring. Now, before you perhaps go ahead and disagree with me, I would say that reading is not boring, but perhaps it is. Hear me out. A lot of time when we start getting into reading, we're really bored, but perhaps it's because we're not reading the way we should be reading. More specifically, we're not reading the books that we're actually interested in. When it comes to reading books, you have to find topics and, and ideas that really connect with you. So start with subjects that you're actually interested in. If you love comic books, start reading comic books. If you love reading about biology, start reading biology. If you love fiction books, start reading fiction books and start with whatever you are actually interested in. And over time, if you actually give it your best foot forward and you're reading about topics you personally are just absolutely 100% interested in, if you're into aliens, go read Alien. Because the best tool that's gonna help serve you in terms of actually reading books is interest. You have to be interested in what it is you're actually doing. And that's just with life. You gotta enjoy and be interested in whatever you do. So you say, Ryan, you know what? I've tried reading books on topics I'm actually interested in. Well, and a second tip I would say is try setting yourself up in different environments. Maybe you just don't read too good at home. You have family members, you know, they're really loud or you have really loud neighbors, plays on the drums. Go to a coffee shop or a bookshop and see if that works better for you. Set yourself up in different environments that would work for you. Now, let's say you tried reading books on subjects you're actually interested in. You've tried changing up for your environment and you've really tried changing the style of books that you read. It's still, you're still not interested and you still find reading boring. 
then fine, I can go ahead and say, maybe reading is boring for you. But my whole point is that you should really try and put your best foot forward when it comes to learning and reading. And just find whatever way that you like to learn, go ahead and utilize that. I think a lot of us are too quick to say, reading is boring, I don't wanna read. How do you actually know if you haven't even given it your best foot forward, if you haven't actually really, really tried? Just like if you don't like mushrooms, but you've never tasted mushrooms, well, how do you know you don't like mushrooms? Same idea with books. You got to really go ahead and give it your best foot forward and really try. Be willing to taste and test and experiment with how you're reading and what you're reading before you just go ahead and say, you know what, reading is boring. Reading's not for me. If you've actually gone ahead and tried and, and, and mixed it up and you still don't like it, then fine. Maybe I'll, I'll put an asterisk on this one. Reading is boring. Maybe it is, but I would encourage you to really go ahead and give it your best shot first. So those are a lot of the common reading myths I've found and, and gotten a lot of questions on throughout the years in terms of reading and building up the community. So I hope you enjoyed some of those takeaways. Let me know what are some other common reading myths you found or that perhaps you struggle with. I know for me, the whole buying a lot of books and then not reading a good majority of them was something I used to actually believe in. Like, oh my gosh, it's this curse or this thing that I'm not doing, how dare I? But it's fine. It's all about perspective and not worrying too much and just enjoying the journey you know so i hope you guys enjoyed today's video in terms of debunking some of these common reading myths please feel free to let me know down below either your favorite or a common one you've heard of that perhaps i haven't answered maybe we we'll make a part two remember today's a great day to have a great day and thanks for watching